Hi, I'm Paul Klein. Welcome to my workshop. Uh, I just want to give you a little background of how the journey to getting to this point. Um, I've been a full-time artist for about 19 years or so. Um, when my youngest son got into kindergarten, I went in full-time, but things really started um, quite a bit before that. As a kid, um, water, woods, forest were my little refuge and um, inspiration. So I eventually uh, would pick up things um, um, as reminders uh, and, and um, like a burrow or you know stones. The materials are part of the journey and I, I like to bring them together um, as functional art, sculptural lighting, illuminated sculptures I like to call them. Um, to me each piece should be um, inspiration, not only to me but to you, it would take you to a special place. Um, the shores of Lake Superior or the backwoods or somewhere calm. Uh, and the lighting is a bonus, so um, um, that's my goal with each piece. So I'm going to show you some pieces that I've got started uh, and um, finally I get to the wood. The wood to me is like the soul of each piece. Uh, not always, but the wood is my favorite medium and that's kind of where I started. Um, so this piece is, uh, the wood is uh, maple, I call it driveway maple. It came from a huge limb that fell across our driveway four or five years ago. And uh, yesterday it looked a lot like a big piece of this, so this is a cutoff from there. And I spent some time, uh, this is also uh, a local stone from our land, I just flattened it out and I wanted the rugged you know, with the smooth. And this, this maple will have a nice curl to it, like a um, cat's eye chamboyance to it. Um, but it, it's also going to have some surprises. <laughs> the tree was, uh, you know, well over 100 years old, had some issues going on. But um, I scribed it to the rock. I've got it screwed. And now it's ready to do some shaping, which I'll do in a little bit. Um, the other ones I've got a black walnut. It was a lot like this. I just chainsawed it in half. Got it from someone about 10 years ago. Cut it in half, let it dry. Um, and I spent some time and scribed it to this um, black rock that I already um, flattened out with my diamond grinder. And this is actually part of an order that I'm filling for someone. It's gonna be a, a figure lamp, much like this is. Um, so after the... the the power tools. Um, one of my favorite parts, I like to fine tune the shape with uh, my rifflers, uh, rasps and rifflers and files. So that, it's like this. It's fairly aggressive. It takes off, um, you know, a bit of material, but it uh, doesn't um, take off too much at a time. The shape that I get, it'll come on, on and off this rock uh, a dozen times to get you know the exact thing fit that I want around there. And then I will uh, take a file, which is more fine than the rasp. It'll get rid of those more, and then uh, start sanding. I can do some initial sanding with a, a power sander, but. Um, Ultimately, it takes a lot of this. So, there you have it. Now you'll have to come see the finished product. Um, I'm just gonna uh, talk about uh, the base of each uh, lamp that I make is our natural stones that I um, usually pick up myself. Um, here's kind of an ongoing pile gathered from here and there. Um, I'll stop at a landscape place, go through their second piles. And, um, and they'll sit there until I'm ready to go. Um, 
Sometimes I have people bring me their own stones, in, in which case this one's got a ton of character. And somebody brought that to me and wants a, a custom piece made, you know. You know, not big enough by itself, and I want to show it off as best I can. I'll combine it with another one, grind this a little bit more flat. Drill between the two with a steel pin and epoxy, and then uh, the, the wood part will, will come off of this piece. And same thing roughly with here. Um, see what's happening. I'm drilling through with my diamond core saw and um, after 10 minutes or so it will go all the way through like this stone and I'll end up with a little plug that comes out and I'll have a nice little stone with a hole in it that I'm gonna use as one of my little cairns. I like to put these on the top of a wood piece, kind of a transition. A copper might come up a little higher before the shade starts. Um, I like the I like the feeling of that uh, cairns to me are like a, a journey, a travel, a trip. Yeah. So I'm gonna talk about making paper. I make all my own paper for the lampshades that I that I produce for my lamps. Um, I think I, I started making my own paper about mm, 10, 11 years ago um, after um, having people ask me, uh, do you make your own paper and where's Amherst Junction? The two most uh, common questions I had. Um, so uh, the, the basic material I use is uh, mulberry bark called Kozo, and it's been around for a long time. Uh, it's been used by humans for at least 3,000 years, uh, going back to Southeast Asia, where the paper making first started. Um, it's, um, it's pretty user-friendly, that's what I liked about it, and uh, not that expensive. So I'll buy the, the bark like this already harvested. And also, I like to add for a little extra texture, some just some local straw. Um, I've got it at different stages here, so I can share that with you, but I, I took about a pound of dry Kozo and um, added a couple handfuls of straw, and I soaked it overnight, as you can see here, and the next stage is actually to drain off some of that excess water and uh, and boil it. I want to break the I want to break the fibers down to get you know a, a finer paper. Another thing I like about the mulberry is that it's being user friendly. Is that I don't have to use the harsh chemicals to break it down like like lies and things. The soda ashes pretty easy to work with. So actually, yeah, I'm gonna boil it hours and I've got some some of the same fiber uh, so this is just after it's been boiled and rinsed it needs some pounding another thing I like about Kozo is it's, it's um, equipment wise it's pretty simple these are just um, chunks of locust wood that I fashion into mallets so um, they're to beat the fibers, like, like many things. So actually, this has been pounded enough so that I think I'm gonna test it. Um, and the way to do that, to see if it's ready to go, is to put some water in a jar, take a pinch, shake it up, and just see if those fibers can float around and a freely without a lot of clumps in there. 
So I'm ready to um, go to the next step. And that is, I'm going to add some water to this. I'm going to add some retention agents. It's, uh, it helps pigments uh, bond to the fibers. Okay, the retention agent. Stir that in. And I think I'm going to use, I call it a gold tone. It's, it's a, a yellow pigment, but it'll be diluted. Um, I'm going to add some of that to this batch. Maybe while that's sitting, I, I might show you some other embellishments that I put in the paper sometimes. Okay, so I'm ready to add pigment to the, the fiber that I have all processed. And I'm going to stock up on uh, my gold tones, I call it. So I'm pouring my Aardvark Colorfast Yellow in here. I'm going to mix it in. There we go. But perhaps I can tell you about some of the other embellishments that are uh, fun to put in sometimes. And a lot of this is stuff that people gave me. You know, we talk about making paper. I was at an art fair in Wausau. Somebody, somebody gave me a bunch of um, shredded money, which is kind of fun to add a little bit here and there. Let's just put some in there now. So uh, other things I like to add, um, every once in a while I get a, a, the original paper maker, paper wasps. They like to build the nests where it's not going to work out, you know, maybe on the door of my outbuilding. So I will harvest that and uh, add a few bits to that now and then. And in fact, I'm going to throw some in there now. Uh, other things I like to add, coffee bean husks uh, from MEJ, so it's fair trade. You know, but I like to add that as an accent, maybe along the top of the shade, maybe along the bottom. Um, Another artist gave me a bunch of scraps of her um, silk, so sometimes I'll put some silk threads in there and just um, just for fun. Um, good old Vince, Vince High, gave me some um, silver dollar money money tree. I believe it's called a little ornamental. Those are fun to put in maybe a little later in the process. If I put it in now, they'll get kind of beat up. So if I want to keep the integrity of that cute little um, paper seed pod. I'll, I'll put it in later. I've also got some feathers that uh, I think Vince gave to me. Uh, milkweed is kind of fun to put in. I'll just, this is uh, 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 some fiber that I had uh, in the freezer left over from last fall and it was ready to go, pigment included. So I thawed it out and I yesterday um, frame in the water and, and, and spread it out and let it dry. So it's actually ready to come out of there. I mean, this is one of the more exciting moments. I'll start in a corner where, in case I get a tear, it would be along the seam and that would be okay because when I put the shade together it would uh, be hidden in the back. Um, I make the frames uh, Three different sizes for each of the shape size shades I make. So pull this out gently. Um, it's pretty strong. It's a, it's, it's a little tender because it's thin, but all those fibers are interlocking. There's no glue in the paper, but I'll just gently pull it out and it's coming along. Should be good. It's one of my favorite parts, pulling this out to get a good look at it. Yeah, it's looking good. Goes. Okay. That's looking pretty good. Nice and viscous. That's the proper word. And I'm going to put my 
frame. It's got a special mesh there. It allows traps the fiber, lets the water come through, much like they'd have in a big old paper mill. And put it in my, this is just plain old water in here. I'm ready for precise measurement of fiber, about that much, maybe, more or less. Pour it in there, kind of spread it around a bit. And start playing. Here's where you get to be a little bit of a kid. It's legal to get wet and messy. But what I'm trying to do is just get those fibers to float around kind of evenly. So that's actually looking pretty good. Pretty well distributed. And I'm just gonna lift it out of there super slowly so it doesn't slosh to one side. But um, this mesh is not cooperating real well, but I'll pull it up and deal with it. So I've got some kind of bare spots that where it sloshed to one side. Okay, so I had a few thin areas of fiber that I don't want anybody to look through and see a bare light bulb, so I want to uh, fill those in um, with a little watered down fiber. My goal with every piece is to have it stand alone as an inspirational piece of art. Um, and the lighting is a, a bonus. 